Here my video. Oh, like Yay, I'm like recording. Back at the weekend. So it's called the weekend cast with Kuja and Rachel. <laughs> Quick, like you a hot stove and I am ungloved hand. Ouch. <laughs> or while we can't look in the eyes of another man for longer than two seconds because we're afraid of communicating something gay. Acknowledging another human being by making eye contact with him has nothing to do with homosexuality, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just generally interested in what you're trying to say. <laughs> well, that's hard for us alpha males to understand because of what we've been taught teaching us that it's not okay to talk about our feelings. That if they found out that our hearts beat to the same rhythms our mothers dance to, we'd be crucified. I guess that's why us boys hide our emotions like they're in Frank's diary, because boys like me, we'd rather burn than be labeled anything synonymous with womanhood or homosexuality. So I've traded in my tears for gasoline. Replaced the smile my mother gave me with a fat lip and a black eye when my father beat the woman out of me. And I didn't cry when he did. No, sir. I didn't even cry at my grandfather's funeral. Because I know that if he heard me weeping, he'd sit up and call me queer from his casket. It's not his fault. It's not my fault either that the Hudson of my expression has been dried up for years now. They just build boys like me this way. Build boys like me to wear fucking stupid baseball jerseys and fucking Wrangler jeans and get into fist fights and wear scars and bruises and drink shitty beer. <laughs> and they always stress from the day that I was born to like the color blue. But I write this for the boys like us who think pink is pretty fucking cool as well. <laughs> for the boys like us who are so scared that they might strip the manhood from our body and replace it with a mother's backbone so we say no homo after everything. Like, yo, jive. Yo, that poem went hard. Now listen, 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 listen. There is nothing funny about a struggle that you and I will never understand. So I will stand for it no more. I promise. I will remove the term from my tongue like the way my father removed himself from my life. 
I'm working on it. I'm trying to rebuild myself. But first, I have to be an electrician and rewire the circuits in my brain. Next, I have to be a plumber and fix these broken sinks underneath my eyelids. Lastly, I'll become a carpenter so I can build a house for my sons to grow up in. Well, they'll know that it's okay to talk about your feelings and that it's okay to cry here. I'm going to build that house and I'm going to paint that motherfucker paint. <laughs> who stayed late. He the master, I the slave, I the young Indian princess, he Tanto the brave, the Tarzan to my Jane, I the Bonnie to his Clyde. It wouldn't matter as long as he was by my side. But the other day I wanted to give him something he could feel. So I started out with his favorite foreplay, a meal. I cut those greens with a zeal, I serenaded that marinade, and I was heavy handed and liberal with my TLC. And before he got there, I was sure to be ready. Apron, heels, naked, makeup not too heavy. When he walked in, I rushed over, rubbed his shoulders, tough like boulders, for they carry the weight of the world. As my hands traveled his landscape, I gave him a good feel of the girls. Laying butterfly kisses in their wake, I walked him to his plate, a gleam in my eye, see, they had him running in circles all day. And when he enters his kingdom, the mandate is no work and all play. After dinner was done, I gave him a long, languid, lingering kiss on his lips as his tree came to full attention. Yeah. Now, I could be a bit of a flirt, so in my sexiest voice I announced, you are dessert. <laughs> my heart began to race, feeling like the build up to a heart attack. As I engulfed his good wood, I became a lumberjack. He <laughs> waves were coming off my body. Cold fronts had dropped to create a perfect storm. He let out an explosive sigh as his essence entered me, salt and warm. Meanwhile, it was monsoon season south of my equator. Dessert was all delicious, seconds could not wait till later. He responded immediately, as though he could sense the need in me. My river was running freely now. As he entered me slowly, I screamed out, No! <laughs> my hips began to quake, feeling like an earthquake, as he enters me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> as he enters me from behind, he put into shame many dancer that thinks he knows how to slow wine. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, he put into shame many dancer who thinks they know how to slow wine. My tidal waves once again almost reached their peak. He pulled back my hair and it felt so good I could almost weep. Then he gave me an open handed smack right across my left cheek, and that's where all composure began to crack. We sang back up to each other as our moans and cries became the soundtrack to those final moments of ecstasy. As he lay spent next to me, he said, damn woman, you know how to put it on man, for real. And my reply is just giving him something he can feel. Thank you. A seven-year-old girl sat in a hollow, rained out cave watching her and God's tears fall in sequence to the injustice of a land and a people, these tears flooded the history of a heart, never to forget what freedom looks like. What war and innocence, my mother, in all her years of living has never turned her back on what freedom looks like. To the politicians that hunger after an Israeli Zionist love affair who say that Palestinians don't know hardship, tell them that Palestine never existed, say that her history was never written, that her children would never have a story to bear. Well, I'd say, tell them I cashed the first payment on my grave the day I was born. Don't tell me I don't know hardship. Tell them I stood to tell the stories of children who did not live long enough to rot their teeth, but long enough for the world to see their rotting bodies. Tell them I spoke for those souls running through the fields of heaven, Woo! grasping at God's fingertips in sermon of chaos, of confusion. Tell them that we were the people that now beauty at the bottom of our feet for the journey we had to walk, that God tilts little in the sky to let us know that he hasn't turned his back on us. That the battle between heart and fiction is a mortal's love for every child that goes hungry, for every mother whose son dies an unwarranted death for the youth who kiss revolution at daybreak and nightfall. All who know magic and the gift of goodbye, the burden born to bear. Tell them I come from hurricane crashing walls. Wisdom given in sermon and chaos of confusion like daydreams, like daybreak, like iron rod spines of faith, leaving us lifted. Branches out a little too far on a land that may or may not get this. I tell them, I leave you notes in the corner of the world 
that God is the only businessman that's kept his word and I'm not willing to walk out the door without a deal. Tell them I hold tsunamis under my eyelids next to worship and wisdom. Now I hold explosives under my tongue like gratitude and godly. I hope you stumble upon my letter soon. For there is more than a message of existence. Tell them there are little girls that sit in caves sharing tears with God knowing freedom will come someday. <laughs> Goes out to my best friend who couldn't make it here tonight. I remember when I watched his hands become earthquakes. Cutting cocaine on cheap packs in the rusty crates with broken glass where broken dreams are born with kids cut glass behind the bodegas. Selling wick checks to young sisters, selling sex for food stamps just to feed tomorrow. See, it's a paradox of affluence and poverty, and poverty provides poor parents with perennial plans and poor parenting, permitting the blocks to watch their children. Mm. Woo! Woo! But the children watch the block. Mm. Corrupt the pops. Infecting the future with crack rocks, cooked up in crack pots until the stock drops. That's why our streets hot. With fiends and rip tops and flip flops, crooked like shit cops that rich jobs took everything but our motherfucking hot tops. Mm. So cats strap up. I got scared when I heard the clips lock. But who wants to sleep on dreams of crime scenes? So we knew one thing. Keep one eye open like a cyclops, cause time clocks your life like a pit stop. Sleeping is the cousin of death. Don't you dare catch a wink on your wristwatch. So your mind wait away, remain wide awake. Watching his environment paint pictures and descriptions sick and twist and like his mother's heroin addiction. Running wild like a children with no supervision, living where our hallways are heartbroken. When we heard of the collision head on, that took a head off. In a rush, the sounds of chalk crust. My man Jake lost his little sister to a game of hopscotch. And his mom was so hopped up, she didn't take the time to notice. I mean, she was right in the house, right on the couch. But she was so strung out. And that's why Jake wilded out and bounced out. And then you had the birth of a junior high dropout. Mm -hmm. Only 13. And now running the streets like it was an urban track meet. Only 13. And now serving fast food to fiends on a curb just to eat. Only 13. Mm -hmm. And already giving up on his dreams. Because believe me, it's really hard to dream when you have no place to sleep. Woo! I became an insomniac. Co-signing crack cocaine to customers on a consistent basis. But the base of base is the basis for bars and bracelets. But my man Jake, yeah. he's a great kid. He's a brave kid. He's just so searching for something life-changing. Nobody would have known that he was going to stumble across something life-ending. See, my man Jake, he lost his life over $40, over a quick fix. And this shit makes me so sick because this shit is going on right now in our inner cities, but we're so caught up in the world's problems that we forgot our own. Right here at home. That's right. But I'll never forget you, Jake. You were the best basketball player I ever knew. And I hope you remember him too, because there's plenty of Jakes out there. This is named Chris, Mike, and Tommy, James, Rob, and Bobby, Sharice, and Nicole, and Nicole, with Susie, and Mary, married to the street life, running with three families, selling drugs, selling sex, selling their souls on empty sidewalks, just to fill empty stomachs when they're just kids. They're just children. Nobody holds their hand when they cross the street. Nobody hugs them at night. Damn sure ain't nobody tell them they love them. So what are you going to do to help save a child? Just from a little care and affection, some love and attention? Why don't we just try and give them an education? So I ended up like my man Jake did dead before graduation. <laughs> if anything, help me help keep them from the streets and teach them that no matter what, don't you ever, ever give up on your dreams. How much is this like? Yeah. Video. <laughs> Had some pizza. Oh, yeah, we just had some pizza. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm drinking Hawaiian. And what is that? Juice in a can? Yes. That's oh, so I weird. So That's good. American. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Wait, you guys this... are normal this? Not no? juice in a can. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No? Not juice in a can. No. No, darling. <laughs> Rachel and Kuja. 
yes, I met them. Well, I met Rachel. When I, I met you last time I came. Yeah. September, August, whenever that was. <laughs> yeah, it was like August, September, and then met. Kuja, this time, yes, today, <laughs> fabulous, darling. We had love, loads and loads of fun, yes. fun, fun, fun. Okay, bye.